Mayhem 3 expands and redesigns the vanilla fleet system. It's like combining parts from a big toolbox to create custom behaviors. This is quite a topic, so we will start out with the basics. There are certain rules which always apply to every fleet. I think these are very important to understand why your ships are doing what they are doing and to which degree you can even tweak that. But to make this guide actually helpful, we will not simply go over each fleet setting, as that would be way too theoretical. Instead, we take a look at various example fleets and how you would go about using them. And we start out with an easy one. To get competitive in Mayhem 3, you likely have to concentrate most of your ships into battle fleets of varying size. During the early game, when you are still fairly weak, you likely also have just one single fleet that you control or even lead personally to make the most out of limited resources. A typical example is that ragtag band of fighters or corvettes you might have assembled during the first ascension stage of your playthrough. Like this group here. We have a Marlin Corvette, a TM and a bunch of fighters. Now you might have established your first sector and at some point you probably want to take all those ships out to destroy some pirate corvettes. Or a small Xenon patrol which is creeping up on your new sector. Yes, I already consider such battles to be major battles. It doesn't matter what you have. Whenever most of your assets are on the line, it is a big deal. Later, you might form your first bigger invasion fleet to take a pirate base down. And even later, when you are invading other factions, you still often have rather important battles. The ones where the stakes are really high and you care a lot. All of those important early game engagements usually have one thing in common. They have your full attention. Already activating too many fleet automation features will actually often mess with your battle plans. In this case, less is more. Okay, let's get to it. We create our first fleet by promoting the Marlin to become a fleet commander. Then we add the fighters to his fleet. This list will give you all ships in the same sector and simply by clicking on them you add them to the fleet. Now we head over to the fleet settings. Make sure to assign this screen to an easy to reach hotkey. You can find it in the extension settings. In this new screen, up here, we get a list of all of our fleet commanders. Right now it's just the Marlin. We can also show or hide his followers. To activate the fleet, simply click on this button. Followers join with commander. For now we disable auto repair. Set this retreat setting to no retreat and this range setting to 10 kilometers. That's all we do for now. The fleet is operational and we can hop into the Marlin and attack our enemy. Our fleet will attack as soon as we fly closer than 10 kilometers to an enemy. That's the earliest and easiest to use fleet setup. So before we head into more advanced stuff, let's quickly go over some basics. Each fleet has a command ship. In this case it's the Marlin. It's our fleet centerpiece. He determines where the fleet is going on the galaxy map. All fighters and the TM always want to be in the same sector as the Marlin. If the Marlin leaves sector, all ships will abort what they are currently doing and try to immediately catch up with him again. Then there are so called fleet followers. These are the TM and the fighters which are flying in space. These ships are supposed to be entirely controlled by the customizable fleet settings system. Which means, as long as you want it to work, you can never give any manual orders to these follower ships. I'm not opening the command console for the TM and give him an attack order. I'm only telling the Marlin what to do. Everything is able to run either completely automated or adjust it quickly inside the fleet settings screen. For example, 
If I want my fleet to currently not attack any enemies nearby, I reduce this range setting to zero. And then there are support ships. Right now these are the four fighters which have docked to the TM. Support ships always behave the same. You generally cannot customize what they do. On default, the Marlin does nothing on its own. You have to tell him where to go and what to do. For this purpose you can use his special fleet commands, but you don't have to. These are actually also only running on a single ship, the Marlin itself. They have nothing to do with the behavior of the other ships. So giving the Marlin a simple move to position order will be the same thing as giving him the fleet command to rally to a location. This fleet system doesn't rely on specific types of orders and generally works on a completely different layer. It doesn't matter what your fleet commander himself is currently doing. This Marlin could be an automated looter or he could be your personal player ship and the fleet followers are basically your quote-unquote wingmates. The follower ships do what their name suggests. Mostly they really just follow the Marlin around. But there aren't any customizable fleet formations anymore. They will also always defend the Marlin as soon as he takes damage. And this cannot be disabled. The four docked fighters are support ships. These are always small ships up to corvette size. They get created automatically whenever ships in your fleet are able to dock to other ships. This carrier assignment runs entirely automated. You never have to define a carrier to be the home base for fighters. The four fighters have just chosen the TM to be their carrier and they land there when the fleet is currently not fighting. Support ships which are docked to a carrier will undock and attack at the moment their current carrier attacks something itself. If you want to control the range at which the undocking of your fighters happens, the carrier must be a fleet follower. Unfortunately, it doesn't work if the carrier is the commander, but since the TM is a fleet follower, he actively attacks anything which enters a certain perimeter around the fleet commander. This is this setting right here, called the scanning range, and that is customizable. We will get to it in a moment. For now, it's just important to know that under normal circumstances, you are not supposed to give any traditional commands to fleet followers or support ships. Only to the commander. Whenever you do that, you are temporarily removing those ships from the fleet. They are still part of it, but they enter a special state. At this point, they are currently not with their fleet. It's really called like that. And this only means that they are no longer controlled by any fleet features. So you can take this fighter here and let him do a special task. Simply give him the order to fly to another position and for the time being he will not be with his fleet. This also shows up at the top of the fleet settings screen. But he can be told to join back with the Marlin. And you can also call all fleet ships to join with the fleet again with this button in the fleet settings screen. Note that this fleet system only works as long as your ships are flying. If you want to dock all fleet ships to a station, you are technically giving an order to each individual ship. This can be done from the Marlins command console. Here you find that broadcast option, which is from vanilla and is like giving an individual order to all ships in the fleet. This effectively sets their status to be not with their fleet at the moment. If you want to reactivate the fleet later, you just make all ships join back with the fleet and then only control the Marlin again. You also got a set of quick commands. These two commander settings here are basically just shortcuts to the attack all enemies fleet command. Only for a specific location, the current sector or the home system of the, of the commander. These two down here can quickly set all turrets to attack or defense mode. 
And then there is a priority attack button. Here you can set a target and your entire fleet focuses its fire on it. All of those settings can be used without removing any ships from the fleet. But these three here cannot. Stopping all ships, making them flee or dock is basically like broadcasting commands. Whenever you do that, you need to join them back with the commander before the fleet gets operational again. Fleeing means that all your ships get an override to dock at the nearest safe station without responding to any attacks anymore. This can be great to make a hasty retreat, but it doesn't look for the best path to safety, so sometimes you will get screwed over. It's always best to see a bad situation coming and just move the fleet commander out of sector before the enemy comes too close to you. Now that we have this basic fleet covered, we can get into other types which are way more complex. You can use them to automate certain tasks. Here are some ideas what these could be. There will always be some pirates or xenon creeping into your territory. Maintaining your empire also means that you need a certain degree of pest control. If you always have to catch those runners by yourself, it will quickly get really annoying. So you want to get this fully automated as soon as possible, sometimes even before getting your first sector. This is one of the most useful and cost-efficient fleets you can create, so pay close attention. To get this working well, it's important to use the correct fleet settings. We are starting with a simple fighter by promoting him to become fleet commander. The composition of this type of fleet is very important. Let me draw your attention to these bracketed numbers in the fleet settings. This is your battle value, a rough estimation of your overall combat power. This will get important soon. The first special ingredient for this light response fleet is the scanning range, because we are not using one, and set it to zero. Instead we are activating this option right here. Followers attack the commander's target. Whenever you do this, it means that your entire fleet will focus its fire on just one enemy, the one that the lead ship is currently targeting. From my experience this maxes out your firepower and gets the most damage out of small fleets. But this is by no means a no-brainer, and it can have serious drawbacks too. Running it on a highly automated fleet like this is only recommended if you have very high speed across all ships. I consider these settings to be a no-go if you are using slower ships than fighters. For example, fighters mixed with corvettes. The fast fighters will reach the enemy first and get killed before the corvettes can even help out. This makes you less effective and suffer more losses. For slower fleets you want to stay flexible and especially guard your rear against incoming enemies. To make a long story short, usually you want some degree of scanning range. All followers will stay flexible and react to any approaching enemies. It's only this time that I'm not using a scanning range because I'm only gonna have fighters in this fleet and I want them to focus their fire. And in this case I can get away with it, because all types of enemies which could get dangerous to this fleet are unlikely to even catch and fight it. So in this special case it is very useful to disable and the fleet will draw much less attention. Your fighters will not engage random enemies and instead focus all firepower on single targets. With only very few cheap fighters you can seriously screw up the pirates one after another. We also use auto repair. If a fighter gets damaged, he heads out to an outpost, repairs for free and then comes back. Just so you know, this technically also sets the status of the follower to be not with their fleet for the time being. Just like if you just told them to dock. But with this automatic repair option, the follower will come back on its own when he is done with the repairs. Since we mostly guard our own or nearby friendly sectors, the next outpost is usually never far away, so going for repairs will always be quick and safe. Definitely use this option. The retreat setting allows this fleet to be a pain in the butt for all bigger enemies. They try to stay alive by fleeing from everything they cannot defeat. We intend to make them avoid pirate corvettes. Now the battle value gets important. 
Your own value gets compared with the strength of all enemies in the sector. And the ratio you set here determines when your fleet commander is going to lose his nerves and retreat from the sector. It's one of those features that only affect the commander's ship. His followers are completely unaffected. But since we are not using a scanning range, his fleet followers won't engage on their own. And unless they are already fighting, they just follow him safely out of the danger zone. This doesn't work all the time. Sometimes an enemy pops up right in front of you. Sometimes the retreat move leads straight into other enemies. It won't be perfect, but usually it does a damn well job to keep these fragile types of fleets out of trouble. But only if your own battle value is not too high. Otherwise, the commander will be too confident and attack anyway. There is no option to tell him to leave as soon as the first enemy corvette appears. The only thing that's really happening is that an enemy corvette entering the sector usually raises the battle value so much that your commander is starting to wet his pants. So at first you might need to keep an eye on them and experiment a bit. They also consider your other forces in the same sector, and this can lead to your fleet attacking anyway. As I said, it isn't perfect, but in the early stages of the game, this usually doesn't happen. And later, you don't care that much, because this fleet will also automatically replace any combat losses. With about 6 fighters in the entire squad, and a retreat threshold of 2 to 1, you should always be fine. Raise this threshold to 3 to 1 if your fleet retreats too easily. Or get more fighters to make them slightly more confident, because their own battle value raises. But I would always stay below 10 fighters, so that an hostile corvette still scares your small fleet enough to make them flee all the time. Retreat max jumps determines how far your fleet is allowed to run away. This doesn't matter too much, and for the most part you can leave that at the default. We don't need to touch any target priorities. We only got fighters and we want them to prioritize fighters, so the default settings are also fine here. But we are happily using the auto renaming feature and activate this option to keep the fleet names updated all the time, even when new replacement ships are joining. This rename pattern uses the same expressions as the global ship naming menu screen in your player console. There are a lot of them, but the most useful ones are ship type and digit to give each ship an individual ID. In this example, I want to call them Hunter, followed by a digit and the ship type. So let's type Hunter minus, then this little star, don't know how this is called, then a D, minus the star again, and then ST. This is the pattern, and it renames all ships to match that pattern. My favorite color would be white. This button applies the naming pattern and you can check it up here. Now we get to sector monitoring. This is an automatic response feature which works on a galaxy map level. You add sectors to this list and the commander will look for certain enemy ship classes. In this case we ignore big ships and freighters. We only want to check for enemy fighters. I recommend to always give your fleets very specific tasks. That's the only way to ensure that they do their job effectively and don't get distracted too much. So when you add sectors to this monitoring list, you should not assign too many and also take the travel time into consideration. It won't matter as much once you have your own jump beacon network, but try to keep it reasonable. One fleet alone won't be able to keep the entire galaxy clean of pirate fighters. Again, experiment what works best and make any adjustments as you need them. So for example, let the fleet secure this cluster here and then another fleet for a different area like this. Finally, we set a quota for reinforcements. This tells your outpost to rebuild new ships if old ones get destroyed. 
and we can also use it to get our first fleet followers going. There is no need to do the additional clicks for building ships first and then assigning them to the fleet. It's way easier to just set an outpost which is able to build the ships right here and then add the ship template. Since this video is long enough, I won't cover how to create these templates again. I said we wanted six fighters, so I'm adding the fighter template five times because this reinforcement feature won't count the commander's ship. And voila! Our fleet is complete. Your commander should not head out until he gets the first reinforcement ships, because only that will raise his battle value and make him confident enough to go and respond into the sectors to the various threats he detects. Once he is on location, he will start attacking anything he can find. His followers focus their fire on the same target, but if an enemy corvette enters, the commander will soon retreat. And at the latest, when your commander leaves the sector, all followers will also abort what they are doing and get back to him. Since in this case all our ships are very fast, this works out pretty well in most situations. Sometimes it fails especially if we have other forces in the area which make the commander overestimate himself, but then the outpost will build replacement ships on its own, and early on it doesn't happen that often. Okay, without all the little annoying flyers around, you still have to deal with the occasional medium-scale pirate raid or xenon patrol. Early on you will have to concentrate all your available forces and meet them personally on the field of glory with low automation going on. But eventually you want to automate this too. Your light pest control fleets won't be able to handle larger threats. They avoid them because you build them around speed and evasion. They are not suited for heavy engagements. So eventually we need a different type of response fleet. Call it the heavy cavalry if you like. These guys are coming in to keep sectors safe when they are under attack from something which scales somewhere higher than just annoying pirate fighters, but still below full-blown sector invasions with big capitals. In short, their primary job is to take out pirate corvettes. You also want to use mostly M6 corvettes or maybe some of the faster M7 frigate designs to match them in this job. These types of ships are much better shielded and less prone to receive damage or losses than fighters. They are well suited for permanent cleanup jobs like these. Usually a group of 5 corvettes or larger will work perfectly, even during the late game. You can scale this fleet up even higher if you like, potentially even fully automated responses to real sector invasions. All of that is possible, but probably not needed. For the basic corvette hunting job, you should try to get ship designs with decent speed, which is comparable or even slightly better than the speed of their main prey, which are the pirate corvette types. But the big difference to the lightweight pest control fleets is that the heavy cavalry is obviously much slower than the fighter fleets. Whenever your fleet has anything less mobile than fighters, you should set a scanning range. And when you are going against other ships, you should also keep this other attack option off, this uh, follower's attack commander's target. Some enemies will catch up to you, and this scanning range defense perimeter is the only way to make sure that your followers engage enemies which are coming too close to them. But of course we also want to cut our own losses to a minimum. This is best done by keeping the scanning range fairly low. It prevents that your followers scatter away and each corvette is chasing after a different enemy. You don't want that. Usually you want to keep a tight formation so that the ships can support each other and don't get picked off one by one in the rear. So here we are, setting the scanning range to a low setting, like 10 km is good. I think this is the lowest you can go in Basic Mayhem 3. Auto repair is also advisable. It ensures that the fleet can probably do its job forever. And we are also still mostly operating in friendly waters, so the repairs are safe and quick. With the retreat setting, you should be much more conservative. You don't want these guys to be hit and run cowards like the pest control. If they respond to a threat, then it is already quite serious. 
we don't want them to go get scared away too easily. Even when the sector gets overrun, they should still go in and methodically take the enemies out one by one, all while staying together to keep combat power high. But we also don't want them to stay and fight large Xenon incursions to the death. We are using rather powerful ships for this job. For those, the default settings actually work pretty well. A retreat threshold of 3 to 1 gives your fleet a basic survival instinct, but it doesn't make them attempt any glorious last stands in the face of certain destruction. Always a good idea to keep this activated on highly automated fleets like these. You won't be looking after these guys all the time, so you want them to get out of a hairy situation on their own. Corvettes are big ships, and the default target priority are other big ships, so like before, we don't need to fiddle with these settings here. Auto-renaming can be done like before, let's call this the cavalry, followed by a number and the ship type again. Color is also white. Sector monitoring, that's not much different from before but this time we ignore fighters and freighters. These guys here should not get distracted by chasing after enemies they can't even catch. We only want them to roll in if it's really serious, and that means big enemy ships. The reinforcements are coming from one of your outposts, like before. And we use, let's say, four corvette templates. This gives us five ships in total so that we have a nice numbers advantage against single pirate corvettes going on. And even when two of our ships are currently going for a repair, we will still outnumber the most typical enemy 3 to 1. For small and medium ships like these, 3 to 1 is usually enough to win without losing your shields and getting your hull damaged. This type of fleet, as well as the light pest control, are also well suited to go into friendly NPC territory and hunt pirates or xenon there. If your own security is already very good and sufficient, you should get a second fleet and monitor certain friendly NPC sectors. You will get a feel where most pirates usually hang out. Don't underestimate how much bounty money it can bring you to keep decimating them this way. This has to be considered another passive income for money and also for reputation. Might sometimes even be worth thinking about keeping some pirate bases alive just to get continuous profits from this. Here we have a wonderful example of how flexible this fleet system can be used. It's a very good idea to assign some fighter escorts to your automated freighter workers. Now later into the game this will get too tedious to do for every worker ship, but early game this is another type of fleet which costs you very little but can have spectacular results. It will keep your economy safe and running. So we could just tell a fighter to protect the trader, right? But that's lame. How about this? We simply take this trader here, he's already running his worker task. Now I promote him to become a fleet commander and we can find him in the fleet settings. See how that doesn't break anything? It doesn't matter what your fleet commander is or what he does, he can be anything. But this time we don't want him to clutter our list here, so let's hide him. This will only affect this screen after we close it. This time we are not using a scanning range. Nearby pirates might not even want to attack us, and there is no need to draw more attention by going aggro on them. This escort fleet will only get active if the trader actually gets damage. But we are using auto repair, we want our fleet to be in good shape and they are also in safe territory, can easily get repaired. The trader itself will get repaired in the times when he's sitting in the outpost, eventually he's receiving one of the repair ticks and slowly get back to full health. 
the fighter escort is going to get repaired as they need it. Now, if you're living in a really dangerous area, you could also use a retreat threshold. This will make your trader avoid strong enemies, but this also breaks his automated worker routine when a retreat triggers, which is generally not what you want. It is possible, and you can even let him send you a message after a successful retreat by activating this option here in his command console. So when you get this message, you could restart him. But in most cases, I would disable this retreat setting for such an escort fleet because you want your trader to do its job, even if, if the uh, area is hostile. We are not using a rename pattern that would mess up our trader's naming too. The only thing we do is add reinforcements. Two fighters is often already enough to distract any hostile pirate and your trader will get away safely. But you can also take this up to four fighters to have some more reserve when one fighter is going for repairs or something. It will be sufficient to take any pirate fighter out and the pirate corvettes will be the only real remaining threat for your trader. Sometimes you just want a fleet to stay right where they are and defend a certain position. Maybe a jump gate, but especially your own jump beacons. This is how you can do that. We will take a look at a small example guarding force. I like to have one of those stationed at each of my jump beacons. They are a bit of work to set up if you have a lot of them, but they do a much safer job than any response fleet which covers more than one sector because those ships might currently be distracted when Exenon slips through your defenses and when he needs to be dispatched quickly. My special beacon guardians will almost always be able to eliminate such runners. We are using an unarmed M5 scout ship to be the fleet commander for this, and he gets accompanied by four M3 fighters as the followers. So I add those ships to the reinforcements and they get built fairly quickly. The unarmed M5 will not draw any attention. That's really the biggest benefit if you're using such, an, such a small ship. It generally survives to keep the fleet with its settings alive, even if strong enemies are coming. And it will also always stay right next to the jump beacon and not move away. The four fighter followers give us a nice superiority against any incoming lone Xenon fighter, even when one or two of our guys are currently off to grab repairs. And the only setting we really need is the scanning range. Set it as low as possible and disable everything else. We don't want to retreat and we want them to stay where they are. The commander simply doesn't do anything. You tell him to move to the position of the beacon and then never touch him. And the followers will automatically attack, which is controlled by the fleet system. And you can also use a rename pattern as you like. But any larger threats should be dealt with by your pest control and cavalry responses. These guardians are really just the last defenders against the odd Xenon who slipped through and who is now trying to infect your jump beacons. You don't need to set up defenses this way, but this could be a solution if you always seem to have trouble with certain jump beacons getting infected. In this case, you can just try this fleet and I think it will work out for you. Once you are actually trying to wipe another faction out, you will get to experiment with different ways how to hurt them. If you just destroy their fleets in big battle after big battle at the border, you might still win the war. But a much more sinister and efficient strategy is to cut their resource supplies. You can specifically target economy ships and destroy the resources they are carrying towards their ship crafting outposts. And even if they don't carry anything, they are easy targets and the enemy has to replace them. 
All of that helps to slow down the military ship production and it will delay any reinforcements, making the war against them much easier. You can automate even this to a fairly large degree. Much like for the cavalry, we are using a fleet of corvettes this time. Speed is even more important than before. Try to get fast trip designs if you can. It will help them to survive really good. Your main enemy are hostile police squadrons. Those consist of a few corvettes themselves and also a lot of fighters. You won't be able to avoid them forever and need to be in fighting shape. That's why we are using corvettes. So a raiding party of about 5 ships should be the minimum. Let's add 4 corvettes to the reinforcement feature and get them built. You also don't want to invest too much into such raiding fleets because these guys have a much higher risk than anyone else. It's probably the most dangerous job you can give one of your fleets. And you shouldn't expect them to live forever. Their job is just to deal as much chaos as they can get and then maybe get back home. Maybe. But oftentimes the way back home also gets cut off from a large fleet and you might have some trouble to get them to friendly waters again. But usually they can do much more damage than they cost themselves, so it is often really worth it to bring a faction down. Their preferred hunting grounds are sectors without any military presence, obviously. You will need to place satellites manually with remote-controlled scout ships. There is no option to get an automatic satellite coverage over enemy sectors. You really have to go in and drop the satellite from the freight bay. That's the, the only solution I found for this. Uh, because you need the satellite coverage for your ships to detect the freighters and then go after them. The enemy will slowly take your satellites out, but this usually takes him many hours. Enough to get your raiding party in a good hunting zone and again look for completely undefended sectors with a lot of civilian travel around, especially supply ships, as these are the AI's agents and they are bringing in the most resources to the outposts. Select a few promising sectors that you have satellites in and add those to the monitored sectors list and also tell them to ignore big ships and fighters. They should only check for freighters and then go there to take them out. Since this is a fleet which is much slower than fighters, we always use a scanning range. Depending on the enemy military density, you can keep this rather low to stay together and have a better chance to fight against incoming police squads, or raise it a bit higher to make your corvettes spread out and kill the NPC freighters more quickly. Don't use auto repair on this fleet. It is operating deep inside hostile territory. There is usually no way to quickly get to one of your outposts and it would only make your slow and damaged ships split away and then get killed quickly on their way back. So don't use auto repair. Instead, you try to keep an eye on these guys and maybe get all of them to safety if they have received too much damage and it's time to go, go back home and restock and repair. You also want to add a certain retreat behavior into the mix. These guys definitely cannot stand up against strong enemy squadrons like task forces or border patrols and you need them to leave when such fleets appear. But it is actually a bit more tricky since the enemy usually has a much higher total battle value in these sectors than you. So don't set this too low either because even all the civilian freighters will all add a little bit of battle value to the enemy's force. And you should start out with something like 1 to 4 and see how that goes. So only when the enemy battle value is more than 4 times higher than your own then the corvettes will go away from this sector. Then you can set the target priorities for your big ships from attacking other big ships uh, to attack fighters. 
that's a good idea because that <clears throat> makes them not always run straight to the police quadrants, which also have corvettes, and they usually focus a bit better on the NPC freighters. Then you can set a rename pattern and you are good to go. What you will also want to do is remove the reinforcements as soon as your fleet heads out because any replacement ships would need to travel to the hostile area to reach your fleet and the chances to actually make it there are often very low so just keep this option off and remove the templates once your group is ready. Sometimes I'm also using a variation of the standard raiding party. It's a group of fast fighters instead of corvettes. They cannot fight the police very well, but if their hunting ground is mostly completely unguarded, then this is not important and fighters are much more efficient freighter killers than the slower corvettes. They are faster and can do this job much quicker. The fleet settings are quite similar to the pest control that you are using to keep your own and friendly sectors clean meaning we are relying on being highly evasive and focused on single targets. Rush in, destroy and get out, basically. A big benefit is that you have to risk much less valuable ships. Fighters are really a lot less valuable than corvettes, and pure fighter raiding fleets usually manage to evade the military and only take out the important enemy supply ships. Miners, traders, service ships, whatever. And even the police often fails to catch those fighters. And if you do lose a few of them, then so what? They aren't that expensive. And usually at least one of them survives, gets to safety, can get some reinforcements from your outposts, and then you can try again. It's a cheap way to keep constant pressure on your enemies with only little input. But keep the retreat threshold a bit higher this time. Your fleet has a fairly low battle value and you want them to still stay where they are, even when there are a few hostiles around. So maybe use 1 to 5 or 1 to 6 this time, because otherwise they won't even go in these sectors. The response feature is only working, the sector monitoring response is only working if the battle value of the enemy doesn't exceed your retreat threshold. Auto repair can also sometimes be worth it for these guys. You are losing a bunch of them because they are fighters and even damaged your fighters are often fast enough to get back home, slip past the enemy. But for most raiding groups, I'm not using auto repairs that much and also the reinforcement feature. It's just too much of a risk to have these single ships which are traveling to or from your fleet through hostile sectors that they get picked off by enemies. Some escort or a police squad usually kills them and it's not, not just worth them. Your best defense in a hostile situation is really the group. Even if your ships are damaged, Try to keep them in the field, and when you think it's time to get home, then bring them all back home at once. Okay, finally, let's talk about some of the limitations of this fleet system. The stuff that's not working all that well, in my opinion. First, we have station destruction. When you give your commander the fleet order to invade a sector, he will first try to kill all hostile military ships and then go and tries to destroy the stations. Your followers are following him, obviously, through all of that and only attack if enemy ships get inside their scanning range. That is what keeps your fleet in a tight formation and usually ensures that you receive low loss rates. But what doesn't work is that followers attack stations inside the scanning range. They only look for ships. Stations get ignored. If you want to destroy stations with your entire fleet, also with the followers, you have to tweak the settings. Now, there are multiple ways to do it. You can, for example, set stations as target priority for various ship classes. And you can also set 
let's say a single xenon station is usually the best example to be the priority target for the entire fleet. That also works so that your entire fleet is attacking it or a pirate base. But the best and most universal way I found is to just activate this option here. Followers attack the commander's target. This will make your followers also attack the same stations together with their commander. Remember that the invasion fleet command is only running on your commander's ship. The follower ships are only controlled by the settings in this fleet settings screen. It does work quite decently with this option here if you also keep a follower scanning range active. The target priority of your followers is to attack enemies which are entering their scanning range first and only then continue to attack the same station as their commander because it's his target. So they will still react to new military fleets and defend themselves if need be and that is exactly what you want. Uh, there is not a better option which offers this flexibility, that they react to new enemies. Okay, so a completely different but other common problem is that the fleet leader is taking damage and getting slower. There is no easy remedy for that, and I recommend to just ignore any light damage altogether. It often even helps to keep your fleet together because the, as the commander gets slower, the followers can more easily catch up with him. But yeah, if he gets heavily damaged, you might want to switch him out so that he can go and repair. But for the most part, it doesn't matter too much if your fleet is slightly slower because if your commander is very fast, then you will have many ships trailing uh, far behind him and you still have to wait some time before you have assembled all ships so if your commander is a bit slower all ships can keep up with him and you don't have these waiting times before a battle before the ships have assembled so it doesn't make too much of a difference i mostly keep the commander uh, damaged if they have like 20 percent hull damage doesn't matter too much just ignore it there are more pressing concerns and finally, we have a yeah, quite serious issue if your fleet commander is a carrier. I've seen this a lot. People want to get these small carriers here and then use them as their command ship. The problem is that the fighters which are docked to this ship are support ships and not fleet followers. The scanning range setting that you can customize doesn't apply to support ships. It only affects follower ships. Support ships always get active as soon as the carrier attacks something. If the carrier is also your commander, your docked fighters will start to engage when the enemy is still very far away. Support ships don't recognize that this is stupid. They still undock, fly ahead and get killed. Your commander is already attacking and he is their home carrier. So if their home base is currently attacking, they think they also need to attack themselves. So what you need to do to prevent this is to get another ship without any docking ports to be your fleet commander. Make sure that all carriers in the fleet are followers. And you will, then you will never have this problem. Because now you can customize the range at which your fleet followers will engage enemies with the scanning range. And all fighter support ships, which might be docked to these carriers, which are followers, will only be launched when the enemy is already inside the scanning range. And that leads to this fact that the fleet as a whole stays together 
and that is what you want. For most fleets, when you are only fighting against other ships, make sure that this option here is disabled. That this is basically an extension of the scanning range. This option follows the tactic commander's target. Usually you don't want that because you want your fleet to stay together until the enemy hits your scanning range. So that is what keeps your formation together. Keep this option disabled. It is required to kill stations. That's a bit unfortunate. But for the most part, in ship-to-ship -ship combat, keep this disabled and it will work pretty well. And that's it. Everything you need to know about fleets. I will likely do another guide video about general missile usage, how to resupply and how to use artillery ships. But that will not be the topic of today. Fly safe.